Okay, this is going to be my how-to on uh, gluing in um, swell shades with cloth hinges on the reed organ. Um, I already prepared by putting the tabs of hinge material on the, the flap and the foundation of the, the swell board. And now I'm going to glue the flap down. What I've done is I've applied the felt to the bottom edge of the swell flap, as you can see here, there's the felt, it's a half inch strip of felt, and I've applied the um, hinge flap, uh, the tab last night using the hot glue to put this in today so I don't have any chance of, you know, knocking the glue pot over while I'm working on the organ or something. I'm just using fish glue, and I just keep fish glue in a little jar, put a lid on it, and that keeps fine forever. So, I use these pins, these are, whoops, oh jeez. These are like tailor's pins that are, you know, designed for, you know, all day use because they have the T-top and they don't hurt to push them in. And they're out of a much stouter metal than uh, like just thin, you know, thin shirt pins, for instance. So get, have a bunch of these. These are really great. So I've used the pin to position the flap in exactly where I want it. Since it already has the felt strip on the bottom, it's sitting just as it's going to the foundation board, and this is Mason and Hamlin, so the foundation board for the swell is, is in place, and everything's been cleaned. The old material's all been stripped, uh, the glue scraped off, it's been just lightly sanded, and then wiped with a wet cloth to get the dust off it so the glue adheres. So this goes takes longer to talk about it than to do it. Um, this put small amount of glue down, put a little bit of glue on the top so it saturates the cloth, and that's about all there is to that. And, um, you can use the pins to, um, if you have it, if it's being a little difficult, if the wood's a little um, stubborn to lay down exactly where you want it, you can even put a pin in afterwards to um, convince the wood down. Um, one thing you might run into is that you get a little glue on the um, tab and it becomes stiff. But when you put the glue on the next day, because you, know, you can let these dry for probably you know six eight hours. Um, you just work. This this tab had a, was, a, was a little stiff because there was uh, dried glue in it. So once you get the moisture on there from the the current batch of glue, that's going to soften that enough so you can get that to lay down. So this part here, this end's just a little high, I think. I don't know. No, not now. Not not since I got the last tab down. I was going to say if this. If this flap was sticking up a little bit above the, um, whoops, geez, that was smart. If the tap was, tab was sticking up, the um, flap was sticking up a little bit, you can get a pin in there and just hold that down flush so it's just where you want it. But I actually like where that one ended up, so that's great. Now we're going to look at the, um, going to look at the front and set up and do the front one. I like to do these in like one shot so there's not like an awful lot of editing to do. So, but yeah, the nice thing is that once this, the swells are, are done in place like this, they're perfect. Um, so. so, you can see how the tabs cross. The, the, the tabs are glued on, well, you always do the underside of the tabs first, the side that you can't see, you know, they're underneath. And you position your piece and look how it fits. Try to get a e pretty even margin across the top. Try to get it so it's not sticking up. Now on, on other brands, they don't look like this, but often the idea is the same, that you have a um, you have crossing, or they call them X hinges, because one crosses from above and the other from below. And um, so sure, just 
put some use the fish glue And not an awful, awful lot of glue. This is pretty minimal. You don't need a lot. This stuff's um, awful, awfully strong. Let's see, this is the front one. And generally put the tabs back in the same place and use the same size tab that was there to begin with. Um, a lot of times, a little block of wood. Um, a lot of times they put them where they put them so that they miss other things like screws and stuff like that. So you don't want that um, interfering. Make it harder on yourself when you have to go to the final assembly that things will be in the way. This sets totally up and stuff. You want to look at. Um, there's an instance where the the tab is a bit stiff because of the dried glue that's in it from attaching it. So we'll work that work that back down. Just a little bit of working with the piece of wood. This has been reduced. Everything's off of it. There's no springs on it. There's no attachments, um, just to keep it as you know as clean, and so you're not working around other things. This is like the first thing that you have to do after you clean after you clean up the thing is to just glue the glue the shades back down. Then you can dress everything back out. But in this case, there's you know the octave coupler attaches to this. The octave coupler mechanism, that's what this thing is. This is the thing that comes up and raises the octopopper table. So, anyway, a bit croaky this morning, a little bit of allergy. Um, so yeah, this is, by the way, this is the 1890 uh, style 431 Mason and Hamlin Sankey. So this is the first you're seeing of this in a video. Um, so yeah, let me kind of walk around and you can see that. So I have one pin holding it down here. And then I have another pin holding it here. And then I didn't like, this seemed to be bowing up in the middle just a bit. So I got one pin just holding it down right there in the center. So yeah, hopefully this is going to be a nice tight fitting swell. You do want the swells to fit tight because the whole purpose of a reed organ is that you can get a lot of different, um, you, know, you can get a great deal of dynamics out of them. So the tighter the swell fits as it's clo in the closed position, the softer the sound is going to be. Then of course you want the swell to open quietly and evenly. And um, so that's why we rehinge them because when the hinges are going on, you know, 100 or 120 years old, they're they're about they're done. So it's really time to change them. The next thing that happens on this, by the way, is a strip of this cloth. Now this is a paper-backed book cloth, and I use this. This is sort of close to what Mason and Hamlin used. Of course, their stuff was filled with. Um, a starch, a colored, black colored starch material on black cloth, so theirs didn't have the paper, but this is paper. I've had pretty good luck with this. It's, it took me a while to um, get used to it. And um, so this gets cut to the right width, which I guess is about, this is a little narrow. This is about, an, probably need to make it about a sixteenth wide. No, that's, that's pretty good. Inch and a quarter is generally the width that Mason and Hamlin used for this, maybe inch and five sixteenths. So this gets glued down. 
and you follow the old pattern, you glue that down, and then that's the outer hinge. There's the outer hinge material for the for the swells. And this stuff gets used on um, swells and mutes on Mason and Hamlin. So you can get this by the yard, a yard that's like, I don't know, 40, 50 inches wide, and it goes for $18. I found a place finally that sells by the yard, not by the little small sheet. Um, so I got that. I also ordered the kind now, um, hasn't arrived yet, should be on the way in a day or two. I ordered the kind that doesn't have the paper backing, um, so I'm going to see how that goes. And if that gets here in time, I might just put it on on this organ. Alrighty, so anyway, this was my second tutorial. Maybe it got uploaded first, but there's also a tutorial on how I polish celluloid keys, and so you can look for that one too. Alright, thanks. Bye.